Hello viewers, welcome to Ronald taking you through this tutorial for a level applied mathematics. And this video, we're going to talk about the topic of motion in a Cartesian plane involving constant acceleration. So, this topic is still under mechanics and is suitable for students in both senior 5 and senior 6 offering principal mathematics as part of their combination. So the motion of this type where acceleration is constant involves use of three equal the three equations of linear motion and also Newton's second law expressed in vector form, not that word expressed in vector form. For example, the equations of linear motion expressed in vector form will be the first one will be V equal to U plus AT. I think we realize that velocity is a vector and also acceleration is a vector, but time is a scalar. So here there is no tilde. But on V, U, and A, there is tilde. You should know that. When you go to the second equation of motion, S is a vector, which is displacement. U is a vector, which is initial velocity. T is a scalar, that's why there's no tilde. A half a T, where A is an acceleration, which is a vector, but T is a scalar. So you should know that for vector, you have to include those tildes, and for scalars, you don't include. Now, when you go to the third equation, it's somewhat unique because remember we cannot multiply two vectors. So what we, can, we shall do, if because there is a square on the third equation of motion, we have to get the magnitude. So the magnitude is what we square because we can't multiply two vectors. We should we can either dot or cross. So same same applies to initial velocity. It has to be magnitude because of this square. Then plus two a. S. Now I think we realize that now here there is a dot. This means that we are going to dot A with S. So you should remember that for vectors we don't multiply but we can only dot. So between two vectors there will be a dot and this dot has to be visible when you are quoting this equation. Now next is also Newton's second law. Newton's second law says that f is equal to ma. Now f is a vector quantity, that's why there is that tilde. m is a scalar, so there is no tilde, and a is a vector quantity. Now a denotes resultant force acting on the particle, and sorry, f is denotes resultant force, and a denotes acceleration of the particle, and m is the mass of the particle. So basically, those are the equations we shall use, and now let's see. Look at the examples. So now we shall go to example one. Example one came from your neighbor 2007, paper two, question eight, and it says the initial velocity of a particle moving with constant acceleration is three three i minus five j meters per second. After two seconds, the velocity of the particle is of magnitude. 6 meters per second and parallel to i plus j. So this is the magnitude of the velocity and this is the direction vector of the velocity. Then they said find the acceleration of the particle. So since we all know magnitude and direction, we have, the first thing to do is to convert from magnitude to vector. So to convert from magnitude to vector, we use the formula which I've already seen that magnitude of the velocity over magnitude, magnitude of the direction multiplied by the direction vector. So the magnitude of the velocity was 6 meters per second and the direction vector was i plus j which is 1, 1 and then therefore magnitude will be 1 squared plus 1 squared everything under square root. Now 1 squared plus 1 squared gives root 2 which is here and that 6 is here, this 1, 1 is there. So when we put this inside, multiply this with each will become 3 root 2 and 3 root 2, th so 3 root 2 i and 3 root 2 j. Now this root 2 is because of rationalizing, so when I rationalize I multiply root 2 on, on both the numerator and denominator. So, so that's how this comes about, is through rationalizing. 
Next, I'll use now the first equation of motion because I now know V, so I'll substitute for V. I now know U was given as 3i minus 5j, which is that. Now, acceleration is not known, but time is known as 2. Therefore, I think realize that I have only one unknown, so I'll simplify that to come up with my acceleration, which is needed. The acceleration will be 0.6213i plus. 4.6213 j meters per second squared so basically that's what they wanted and now let's see how much can be awarded so m1 is for substitution and b1 is for the velocity vector m1 is for substitution on the left hand side and this m1 is for substitution on the right hand side then a1 is for you to simplify to get the output which is a 1 so basically that's how the five mass could come about. Now shall go to example two. Example two came from UNEB 2001, paper two, question 13, and it says, an object of mass, five kilograms, is initially at rest at a point whose position vector is negative two i plus j. If it's acted upon by a force, 2i plus 3j minus 4k newtons find part a the acceleration part b its velocity after 3 seconds and part c its distance from the origin after 3 seconds so first of all for part a they wanted acceleration i know that acceleration can be got from newton second law which is f equal to m a and when i make a the subject i'll come up with a being equal to f over m i think realize that there is tilde on f and tilde on a meaning that these are vectors but a is m is a scalar so there is no tilde so you should always be keen to differentiate between vector what is a vector and what is a scalar now my mass was 5 kilograms so I'll come and put that mass here and my force was 2 was 2 3 negative 4 which is that and when I simplify I come up with 0.4 i plus 0.46 j minus 0.8 k meters per second squared so basically that's what they wanted in part a let's see how the max were awarded for this part before we go to the next slide so M1 was for substitution, Newton's second law, and A1 is for you to get the acceleration which they want in vector form. Now we shall go to part B. Part B said that find its velocity after 3 seconds. So velocity will be got from the first equation of motion where v is equal to u plus a t. Now initially the total is at rest, so it has so velocity was zero, but it has to be represented in vector form, which is zero zero zero. So and accelerate time was three seconds, then a was that which we got in part a, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and negative 0 0.8. So when I simplify, I'll come up with my velocity being equal to 1.2, 1.8, and negative 2.4. So now we shall go to part C. And part C says, find its distance from the origin after 3 seconds. So before you get distance, you have to first get displacement from the second equation of motion. So in this case, u was the initial velocity, which is 0, 0, 0. I think we realized that u is represented in vector form. Then t was 3 seconds, which is 3 there, and think we realize that t is a scalar. Then a half, which is that. Then t squared is, three, is here, which is 3 squared, and a is this, which we got in part a. So when I simplify that, I'll come up with my displacement being equal to 1.8, 2.7, and negative 3.8. Six. So what you should realize is that that displacement is the displacement from the initial position. So this is S here and displacement from initial position which is A. So from A to B is S. Therefore, if they want displacement from the origin, I have to, mod I have to add initial displacement plus 
the displacement from the origin to come up with my R uh, T. So with that, I should now come here and say that displacement from origin, which is R T, is equal to R naught plus S. So therefore, R naught is negative two one zero, and S is. 1.8, 2.7, and negative 3.6. So when I add the two, I'll come up with negative 0 0.2, 3.7, and negative 3.6. So now that I've got displacement from origin, I can come and say that distance from origin is equal to negative 0 0.2 squared plus 3.7 squared plus negative 3.6 squared. When I use the calculator, I'll come up with 5.1662 meters so basically that's what they wanted in part c now let's see how much can be awarded for part c and part b so for now for part b m1 we have mark for addition substitution for you and a and output so m1 will be for addition and b1 will be for substitution here and this b1 will be for substitution here and then a1 will be for the output then for part c m1 is we have a mark for displacement from initial point so m1 is for substitution and b1 is for the displacement from initial point Then for this slide, M1 is for substitution and B1 is for you to get this specimen from origin. Then M1 is for substitution and A1 is for getting distance from origin. So this is supposed to be distance, not displacement. So basically, that's what they wanted in this example. So now we shall go to example 3. Example 3 says that a particle travels with a speed of 12 meters per second in the direction 2i plus j minus 2k and 4 seconds later its speed is 18 meters per second in the direction 7i minus 4j plus 4k then they say uh, calculate the average acceleration of the particle in the 4 seconds so first of all you shall remember that we are given magnitude and direction for initial velocity for example initial velocity magnitude is 12 and direction is 2 1 negative 2 then for final velocity magnitude is 18 and direction is 4 negative 7 negative 4 4 now with that knowledge you can now come and answer the question which is as the first thing to do is convert from magnitude to vector Therefore, initial velocity it will be magnitude of the initial velocity over magnitude of the direction vector multiplied by the direction vector. So, magnitude was 12 and direction vector was 2, 1, negative 2. Therefore, its magnitude will be 2 squared plus 1 squared plus negative 2 squared. Everything under root. So, when I simplify this square root, I'll come up with 3. Therefore, 12 over 3 is 4. Therefore, 4 times 2 is 8. And 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So basically that's the initial velocity. Now we shall go to the final velocity and still use the same formula. So magnitude of the final velocity was 18, direction vector was 7, negative 4, 4 and its magnitude will now be 7 squared plus negative 4 squared plus 4 squared. Everything under root. So when I simplify the square root I'll come up with 9. Therefore, 18 over 9 is 2. Therefore, 2 times 7, I'll come up with 14. 2 times 14, 2 times negative 4, I'll come up with negative 8. 2 times 4, I'll come up with positive 8. So now that I've got initial velocity and final velocity, and I know the time, I can use the first equation of motion to get the acceleration. So I'll say first equation is, give, is equal to V minus U over T when I make A the subject. Therefore, V is this, so I'll come and substitute for V, then substitute for U, and then also substitute for T, which is 4. 
when I simplify I'll come up with my acceleration being equal to 1.2 negative 3 and 4 meters per second squared so basically that's what they wanted and now let's see how mass can be awarded so m1 is for substitution and b1 is for you to get the initial velocity b1 is for you to get the final velocity and m1 is for substitution and a1 is for you to get the acceleration which they want so basically that's how the five mass could come about so that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and be reminded that the next video will be on motion in a Cartesian equation in a Cartesian plane involving variable acceleration. So what you have looked at in this video has been constant acceleration and the next video will be variable acceleration. So if you have not yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when this video on variable acceleration has been uploaded otherwise thank you for watching and also if you know any student who's not yet on this platform please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like facebook and whatsapp so that we can all benefit as a family